All right, so this is going to be my my uh, approach to tying a humpy. Uh, it's a pretty popular dry fly, um, and I don't fish it too much, but I do enjoy tying them. Um, that's kind of what we're going to end up with at the end of the process. Pretty cool fly. There's uh, a lot of options for the body. I'm going to do the body in a in a burnt orange. Um, I've seen chartreuse bodies. I've seen yellow bodies. There's all kinds of different colors you can do. Um, but I'm going to go with the burnt orange today. So in the vise, I've got a fire hole 718. Uh, that's in size 14. Thread-wise, I'm going to go with burnt orange UTC 70. Um, I, I like to match my thread with the body color. So we'll get that started right behind the eye. And I'm just going to run a thread base about halfway down the hook shank. The reason why I like to do it about halfway down is we are going to tie in a deer hair wing and the deer hair wing will sit on top of the shank better if the uh, if the thread is laid down. So we're going to leave a little bit of room there past the eye <clears throat> and you want some sort of shorter, uh, straighter, a little bit more uh, you know stiff deer hair for these wings. You can use regular deer hair, but they're not really going to give you the, the wing look that you're looking for. They're going to kind of splay all over the place. So some sort of uh, shorter, finer deer hair will give you what you need. And you want to stack in a little chunk, get rid of some of that under fur. And we'll measure out the wings, which will, oh, that looks about good right there. So do a pinch wrap here. I don't want that sliding forward too much. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, pull that tight. And I'm just going to start wrapping backwards with as tight a wraps as I can get without running into a fear of breaking my thread. We'll come in here with our scissors. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to grip this other side. I want all of this kind of sitting on top of the shank there. Everything straight. Get rid of this stray fiber here. And I'm going to slip my scissors in here. And I'm just going to snip away at an angle to taper that hair down. Get all that in there. I can already see it coming. All the comments about laying down some glue. I'm sure that's on its way. But I'm just going to take my index finger here. I'm going to hold the back end of the hair. And I'm just going to kind of Take tight touching wraps all the way down to completely secure every bit of that hair. And that looks good. So what you want is you want to try to make sure that at every step you're really not going too much overboard. Um, there's quite a few materials in here and some of them rather bulky that we're going to have to tie in. And if you're, if you're kind of loose with your wraps and you're not really paying attention to what you're doing, uh, you can really build up a lot of bulk really quick, and, and this fly can go south pretty easily. So we want to make sure that, you know, we're tying everything in with nice tight touching wraps, uh, fitting everything down, keeping it clean, because that's going to go a long way. So the next order of business is I'm going to take a small clump of this moose body hair. I'm going to cut off some fibers, get those in my stacker. This is going to be our tailing material. Again, you don't want a massive, massive chunk of this stuff. Uh, the bigger of a chunk you cut off, the more body mass that's going to build up. So we'll get that out of the stacker. Again, moose, just like deer hair, is going to have some under fur that you want to get rid of. So we're going to take our tail and we're going to measure it where we want it which is right about there, transfer the grip and get that tied down tight. I'm going to hold those tips as I run my thread down the back of my fly, making sure all of that's going to stay nice and tight. That's what we end up with. I'm going to slip my scissors in here. There's one piece in here with a butt end on it, and I don't like it. I, I looked for him before I tied these in. I must have missed this guy here. Not a big deal, but I get I get picky with that kind of stuff there. All right, so now we're good with that. I'll take one more wrap, try to collect those fibers a little bit. There we go. 
Okay, so we'll work our way back up towards the front. I want to collect all these, get them situated on top of the shank so that I can come back up with my thread and with some touching wraps, get those tied down nice and tight. And then we can slip our scissors in here, get rid of them. And then a few more wraps will clean everything up nicely. And then, there you go. So, so far we're good. Nice, tight, tapered body. Everything is kind of looking the way we want it to look. All right, one, one thing I do want to point out, uh, we're going to end up splitting these wings and standing them up. And obviously you can tell that I'm kind of not doing that right now. Um, I'm going to hold off on that a little bit. Uh, once you stand them up, they kind of get in the way of some of the other things that you're going to have to do here. So I'm going to leave them facing the front of the fly for now. And I'm just going to take a couple of wraps back down towards the back of my body. Because the next thing that we're going to tie in is another clump of the moose body hair. This is the piece that's going to get draped over the top of the fly. I'm going to cut off about that much. Not a ton, because again, you don't want to build up a whole ton of bulk. Let's get some of that fur out of there. Actually, this clump that I tied off would have worked better for the tail. A lot more better fibers, but what are you going to do? So we'll get this stacked up. And the only reason why I get this stacked up is because I want to align those tips so that I can all, they can all be tied in together. Okay, I'm just gonna take my tips here and I'm just gonna take the very end and just snip those off. I'm gonna rest this on the top of the hook shank, get a loose wrap to kind of gather them. And I'm gonna pull that tight to where I want my body to end, which is right about there. And we'll come in the rest of the way and tie those down with tight wraps. Now you want to try to make sure that you're using some longer fibers. Moose mane has a lot of short fibers mixed in with it. And you want the longer fibers because when you go to fold this over the top, you want to be able to separate from the tail fibers. You don't want all that stuff mixed in. Now, so far, this is working out the way that we want it to work out, but if you feel like you're getting a little bit too much bulk, you can tie your uh, your your body material in your floss at right now. I mean, we're going to tie it in right now regardless, but I'm going to tie it in facing the back. And the reason why I'm going to tie it in facing the back is I'm going to come forward, backward, and then I'm going to return to the front again. Three total wraps of my body. If you feel like your body is already built up a little bit too much bulk, tie your floss in facing the front so that you only have to go down and back. And that's one less set of wraps, and uh, that'll help you with your with, with if you feel it's too bulky. So right now we'll get this in, wrap that around the front. I'm going to take a couple of wraps here just to kind of secure it. And we'll pull that even with where I want my body to end. We'll finish that up with nice tight wraps. And back to the front. So when you're at this step, hopefully you've got a nice smooth underbody and you can start wrapping your floss. Try to get touching wraps with the floss because the floss is much thicker than the thread. So if you're overlapping, you're gonna see quite a, quite a lumpy body. So I want touching wraps, trying not to overlap too much. Keep that nice and smooth. We'll get that all the way to the front. And then we're gonna double it back towards the back. And again, you can see that we're building up a little bit of body bulk here. So if your body was already bulky to begin with, you can tie this in so that you can finish it off with just two wraps. Double that back over again. Work your way back up to the front, keeping this tight the entire time. Try not to lose your grip on it, because then you're going to have to go back and redo it all again. That's never fun. And there we go. So get that tied off with a couple of wraps. 
And this is the stage, now that our body is done, that most of the stuff that we're tying in, well, not most of, all of it's done. So we don't have to worry about our hair wing getting in the way anymore. So now let's pull that up tight. Let's get a couple of wraps in front to help stand it up. Not too many. You don't want to build up too much of a dam. See, it's just a couple of wraps will stand that up just fine. You don't want to do too much because if you build up too much of a dam, that'll splay out your hackle when you lay it down. So now we'll come in, try to find the center point of this hair where you can divide it into two even sections. It's not going to be perfect, but it doesn't need to be. We'll split that in half and we'll hold these tips tight and run your thread around the bottom of the hair. You don't apply too much pressure or else the hair will just collapse and your thread will kick back. But you want to get some wraps around the base of that to collect those fibers and get them to stand up the way you want. Do the same thing here, a couple of loose wraps just to kind of collect everything. There we go. I want to collect these back fibers a little bit more. And that'll work. Good. It's good to get those collected as much as possible because the more they're splaying out all over the place, the more your hackle will catch them and It'll just end up all over the place. All right, so now we're going to take our moose hair fibers from the back. I found another, that's a, another fiber I want to get rid of. So we're going to pull this tight and fold it right over the top of our body and hold it while you run your thread over the top of it and get that secured. And you can slip your scissors in. We'll pull this back. And I'll slip my scissors right in here and snip that off. And of course, you can probably see that we have one little rogue fiber here that popped up. That'll happen. You'll get all kinds of different lengths with moose body hair. There's also one little butt end in here, too, that I don't like. I know, I know I'm picky, but I just don't like that kind of stuff. So... Okay, so far so good. So hackle-wise, what we're going to do is we're going to mix kind of like an Adams. Uh, we're going to do a brown and a grizzly. And now I'm going to take my grizzly, and that is the feather I'm going to tie in second. I'm sorry, I'm going to wrap it second, so I want to tie it in first. So that's tied in first. Then I'm going to come in here with another brown hackle. We'll get that cinched in. Nice tight wraps. You want to try to make sure that the base that you're wrapping your hackle on is even. That'll help keep it from just splaying all over the place out of control. Get these snipped out of there. Very good. Now, really just a matter of wrapping the hackle at this point. So when you start wrapping this, you generally want to start with your brown, and you don't really want to wrap it too, too tight. Uh, usually when you wrap hackle, you want nice touching wraps, one next to the other. Uh, with this one, you're going to do something similar. I'm going to get my first wrap on there nice, and then my second wrap, I'm just going to kick it over a little bit, and I'm going to leave just the smallest imaginable gap between the two quills. And the reason why is I'm about to come back the second time through and wrap the grizzly in there as well. And if you don't have any room to slip the second hackle in there, all it's going to do is just splay your first, just splay everything all over the place. Uh, it's going to kind of look like a jumbled mess. Okay, so our brown is on there and secured. Get that secure with a couple of wraps. And we'll take our pliers, we'll come back in here, grab the grizzly. We'll get our first wrap on there. And now what we want to do is we want to angle it to the front and start slipping that grizzly into some of those gaps that we left when we loosely wrapped the brown. And we'll pull 
pull our hair wing back a little bit. Just get that in there. Fold that back, get a couple of wraps in front. Get my fine point scissors in there. That should get most of that out. I like to get a couple of wraps in front because then you can get a nice clean head on your hackle without hackle sticking out all over the place. A couple of rogue fibers here. That first wrap can sometimes get a couple of fibers sticking out. Doesn't mind if this it doesn't really matter if this is a little bit bushy. I mean this this pattern actually calls for a little bit of that, so not a big deal. One more little fiber in the back. Get that out of there. And we'll come in here with a whip finish. Now I you I do usually put a little bit of head cement on these flies. I don't really use head cement much, but I like a little bit of a glossy head on this. No particular reason why. So I'll just get a little dab of resin on there. Get in there, zap it with the torch. And that is pretty much it. That is the humpy. Now, the biggest thing with this fly, it's, it's not particularly difficult to tie. It's pretty straightforward. The only thing I do want to suggest is make sure that you're mindful of what you're doing with the body uh, leading up to where you get to the hackle because this is a fly where you can build up a lot of bulk really quickly. Um, so you want to make sure that first of all you're not using too big a thread. As I said in the beginning I was using UTC 70. That's more than fine. Uh, make sure that you get everything tied down nice and tight, nice and secure. Try to keep that nice taper going as you're going down the body. Uh, as long as you're mindful of that stuff and then tying in the moose mane for the top of the body in by the tips. Uh, if you're mindful of all that kind of stuff, you can help reduce your bulk. Uh, but if you're a pretty good way through the fly and you feel it is still kind of bulky, remember what I said about tying in your floss towards the front where you only have to go front to back. Um, that'll eliminate one entire floss wrap uh, that'll help minimize a lot of your bulk. So pretty straightforward, very, very popular fly. Any questions or anything, just leave them in the comments.